Good morning, everybody. So welcome to another Free Friday tidbit that I will be bringing to you about the NOR Behavioral Model, which was created for working with those with fetal alcohol uh, spectrum disorder, but is useful no matter what the reason that someone finds themselves neurodivergent. So the month of February has been all about nutritional needs and how the brain um, works differently with regards to nutrition, what kinds of effects can be seen. And we've talked about a lot of different things this month. This week, we're going to finish up nutrition with the need to eat and hydrate regularly, frequently, every two hours throughout the day. And this is not new advice. If you've taken any trauma-informed trainings, you've probably heard this as well. So what it comes back to is a fully functioning brain sucks up 25% of your available energy, even though it only weighs 2% of your body. But if for whatever reason, your brain has detours built into the way that the circuitry is wired, then it has to work extra hard particularly if there are some weak links in that in the in that detour circuitry right so in order to keep things optimized to to the best level that you can function it's important to eat and hydrate every 2 hours now one thing that's interesting is that you are 10% dehydrated already before you even feel thirsty so the brain needs water in order to work well. So stay hydrated. If your child has an IEP or 504 plan, get it in there that your child can have a water bottle at their desk. And which of course means they can go to the bathroom when they need to. Okay, so with food though, you know, the brain uses sugar for its energy and fats which convert quickly to sugar. Um, so it's important to have that onboarding throughout the day because it gets depleted so quickly. Now, one very good tip is to, to use a complex carbohydrate rather than a simple sugar. And also, if you can combine it with a protein, because that way it'll go up slowly instead of spiking up and falling fast, right? This gets mood swings. We don't want any more of that than we already have, right? So this, and then the protein will keep it up, um, is the smart way to go. The other important thing to note here is that there are a couple things that may be going on with the circuitry. And there's no way really to know, but in all of neurodivergence, there's an issue about is signals being sent, getting to where they need, getting received and recognized by where they need to be received, right? So there's a big nerve that called the vagus nerve that does basically everything in your trunk, right? So that's where a lot of the nerve stimuli gets sent up to the brain about what's going on in the body, right? So one of the things that we have found is that for some reason, messages of I'm hungry are not getting received and processed, right? So you'll recognize this in the behavior that we have grown to call in our country hangry, right? That, that particular type of angry you get when you're really hungry. Um, the other thing that might be going on is maybe that message is getting received, but the one that is not is the signal saying, I'm full, <laughs> I'm satisfied, I have enough, stop eating. And if that's what's going on, what you'll see are, are the folks that eat and eat and eat until they get physically sick. Um, so those two things could be accounting for things that you are seeing in your home don't know, but it's information for you to think about. And next week, when we come back again for another free Friday tidbit, we will start off the month of March with language and communication. That is next month's theme. So I hope that today was helpful for you. And it's been fantastic 
coming out and, and doing this series. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been beneficial. Take care. See you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye.